What's up, VC? Karen here. It's that time again. Time for another new finds video. It's been about a month since I made the last uh, digs video. I've had a bunch of records, um, you know, that I got in end of August that I've been meaning to show. Just haven't got around to, to making the video. Excuse my uh, congestion here. I'm uh, getting over a little cold. But so I have a pretty fat stack of records. I don't know if I'm gonna get to them all. We'll see how the length pans out. But um, I've uh, probably 15 to 20 records that I got. Most of them jazz, a few soul. So let's get to it. <clears throat> First one is oh, you just saw a little peek there. A record that I was. Didn't think I would ever come across, especially not in a store in Montreal. And it was really, really, um, I, I don't know, funny because I was just talking about the record with uh, Paul, Baraka P. Dub, saying that, you know, I didn't think I'd ever find one. And I really wanted that record after I made the uh, the mixtape. It's one of the records, I, the albums I showed on CD for the, the mixtape for his 300 subscribers contest. And then I think the next day after we kind of went back and forth talking about it, I went into this record store, I was going through a new arrival section, and bam, there it was. And usually when you see the cover, you're like, okay, it's probably a reissue of some kind. It was an original. So the record is Blues and Roots, Char Charlie Mingus. Charles Mingus, but on here it's Charlie Mingus. So this is an original. It's not in perfect shape, but good enough for me for now um, and it's an original and it was cheap because it's not in great shape but uh, it was fairly priced I would say I got it for fifteen dollars and it's my first Atlantic on this label the the early sixties so that is Charlie Mingus Blues and Roots and that is one of my favorite Charles Mingus albums if not my favorite I know it's not one that people list as their favorite People um, always say Mingus, 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 or Black Saint, The Sinner Lady, and I love those albums, but this is the one that really got me uh, into Charles Mingus, and when I was first getting into jazz, it really, really hit me hard. So, really, really happy to find this, especially for the price um, that I found it. First time I see an original of this. Amazing, amazing record. And talking about Atlantic, I was gonna show this one later, but so that was my first record. That's my first record on that uh, early '60s Atlantic, which is the I don't know how it's you know the fans in the middle as opposed to the one on the side, which you'd see just after that. But the other record that I found a couple weeks earlier is this Mill Jackson Plenty and Plenty Soul, which is it's it's nothing you know amazing. But it's it's a nice album. It's a it's a good listen. I, I enjoyed it, and I love the cover. Just for the cover alone, um, you know, I, I would have picked it up for for the price that I got it for. I think it was also about fifteen bucks. But the reason I really wanted to get it is because I didn't have any Atlantic black labels. So this is an original black label, mono, deep groove. So very very happy you know, at least to get one of those, you you just never see them um, around. So so this is obviously from the, the late late fifties and the following label, the Blues and Roots, is just what followed, I think, in I don't know if they introduced them in the late fifties or the sixties, but love this cover. Milt Jackson, plenty, plenty soul. Who else plays on this? You have Sahib uh, Shihab on uh, this you have Frank Foster and uh, Art Blakey on drums uh, on one side you also have Horace Silver on here so great musicians okay what's next oh here so this is the one I picked up just the other day and this is Michael Howell in the silence and I was talking to uh, Tom uh, about this one and telling him that uh, I came across it, and it kind of uh, it surprised me that I hadn't seen anyone show it. Really, really like this album. I'm really enjoying it. 
and it's one I've seen, I uh, haven't seen anyone show before. Maybe someone has and I missed it. So if anyone knows this, I'll do a little needle drop on this because uh, this really blew me away. So it's on Milestone. It's from about 73 or 74. And you have Michael Howell on guitar, Benny Maupin on a variety of instruments, Henry Franklin from Black Jazz Records on bass, uh, Glenn Howell, who I'm assuming is related to him, uh, who plays bass on a couple tracks, Ebony King and In the Silence. And on drums, you have Ndugu, and on uh, Kenneth Nash on conga drums and percussion. And the bass on here is sick, as well as uh, as well as the drums and the percussion are really, really cool. And I love another cover here. Um, very nice, kind of introspective. And some of the music on here kind of reminds me of a certain moments of... Sorcery by Jack DeJohnette and it's a, and also I find the cover not the you know just that it's bl a really black cover with an image and instead of prestige in the corner it's milestone which I found funny so I'll do a needle drop on this for you guys because this kind of really surprised me Drums. So there's a few tracks that are stellar and then a couple that don't really fit. mix of spiritualness, spiritual vibe, and funky vibe, which is really, really cool. And I know a lot of people aren't necessarily into guitar or jazz, but this one's different. So that was The Call, and this is Ebony King. This is the one that reminds me of Sorcery a bit. So that should give you a little idea if you're into this or not. If it sounds uh, like something you might like, definitely check out In the Silence on Milestone, Michael Howell from 73 or 74. And another one, and another one that really stands out for me, um, not that what stands out is the bass and on he, the Michael Howell, I love the bass. And this one is kind of similar in that sense where the bass is really in front and it's Ron Carter Quartet Piccolo. And I had seen this at the record store actually, I'd been there for a while, and I came across um, Van Secofunk's Instagram <laughs> feed, and he had show, just shown this, <coughs> sorry, and uh, recommended it. So I uh, went to check it out online, and it sounded dope as all hell. So I had to get it. So I'll do a little needle drop on this, but you guys can check it out online. This is really cool. This is from 77, I think, somewhere around there. Yeah, recorded at uh, Sweet Basil's. So it's a live uh, set. So good. Yeah, the 
by Kenny Barron, Buster Williams, and Ben Riley, and Ron Carter. Just dope, dope bass all the way through. And it's uh, got another one that's spiritual. But... Kind of a little funky. Okay, I'll let that play out. Next one is probably so these three that I the first three, well, the Michael Howe, the Blues and Roots, and the Piccolo, and this one are all incredible. So happy to have them and really enjoyable listens. The Gap Sealer by Jimmy Heath. This this is excellent. Um, this is on cobblestone, which is I guess what Muse. Well, it says cobblestone and Buddha, but it looks like a Muse record, so I guess I think uh, Cobblestone uh, turned into Muse later on. Um, maybe I'm just talking out of my ass, but I feel like it's something like that. So this also has Kenny Barron, Bob Crenshaw, Matume, and Al Tudi Heath. Um, and this has some spiritual feel to it as well. Uh, so I definitely recommend you pick this one up, The Gap Sealer, Jimmy Heath, if you come across it. These three, this, 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 get your hands on them, they're all, should be easy to find, well, easy, easy enough, nothing crazy. I picked up this, no, this is an original, it's a classic records pressing, I came across it, uh, um, I had known that they had this and I thought they sold it and couldn't find it when I had looked for it in August and then I came uh, across it again a few weeks later when I was at the store. So my second classic records pressing, very very happy to find this. Lee Morgan, one of my favorite artists as you guys know. This one Candy has Sonny Clark on piano, Doug Watkins on bass and Art Taylor on drums. Some good hard bop. And very far from that album is this, Coltrane Ohm. Found this at the flea market. And I had never even heard any clips from this and I need to give this some more listens to absorb it because it is out there, let me tell you. It is different, it is probably the least accessible to the year Coltrane album I've heard exploring. Um, big time but definitely some moments that I enjoyed on it but some where you really need to sit and just um, just take it in and uh, go on a journey and so Coltrane and next up is Miles a couple Miles albums nothing crazy but I have a hard time leaving them behind when I see them for cheap this is not spectacular it's a very short set it doesn't really feel complete but I had never heard it and it wasn't expensive that's Quiet Nights um, and this is an original uh, American pressing it's the, the 2i 2i uh, and it looks like deep proof there and I picked up this which I had never seen before for uh, I don't know I think it was 10 bucks nice little live set Miles Davis in Europe so collecting uh, adding to the Miles Davis uh, collection this one is probably from the mid 60s Anyway, Miles Davis in your live set. Picked up this, didn't have it, found it for cheap in uh, decent shape. Obviously, don't need to say much about that. Sampled to death um, on CTI, first Bob James record. I still don't have uh, two, but I'll pick it up when I see it for cheap one day. This was a, a cool find, actually. I would have put, I will put this in there with the other ones. Is uh, this Max Roach album from the I think early '70s that I had never heard? It's uh, with a gospel group, so Max Roach with the J.C. White singers, and it's lift every voice and sing. Uh, I haven't listened. To, I listened to you know some of these I got um, over a month ago, and I listened to them a bunch, but this one really really hit me and surprised me because it was it was not what I I mean what you'd expect it's not a typical jazz album very different but definitely some spiritual stuff on here it's really cool I don't know if I, I've never seen anyone show this Max Roach LP this another common one that 
I didn't have that I've seen a million times, but really glad I picked this up. Les McCann, invitation to open this. Not, I mean, I, I see that you've seen this and you leave it behind because, you know, it's just a common record, but this is definitely, if you don't have this, this is dope. Let me tell you, I had no idea Youssef Latif's on here is one of my favorite jazz, jazz musicians. So, just on that alone, it's worth checking out. And you have uh, Bernard Purdy, Pretty Purdy on drums, and a whole bunch of other musicians on here. And this is definitely a long, long track. Side one, just one song, The Lovers, 26 minutes, and the other two tracks are 13, 12, 13 minutes. Um, so they, uh, they take you on a little journey, which is, you know, it's my, uh, I was very pleasantly surprised by this. So this is Tina Riwen, the Radio Tizda Sessions, and this is the vinyl reissue. It was never, it's from 2001. This is a group from Mali. I don't know much about them. I haven't read the, I just picked this up a couple days ago. I read a little bit of this, but I haven't read the full little booklet insert they give you. This is a beautiful, beautiful music from Mali. And I think it's some radio sessions they had done. <clears throat> they were released on CD at the time. And I think they've been making music for a long time before that, but that's kind of what, what got them some <clears throat> world worldwide exposure and took them on the road. So this is, uh, I think was released last year on, uh, what is this? Light in the Attic, Modern Classics, Light in the Attic Records. And this one, so I found this used actually. Someone didn't like it or something. But this is on the limited edition gold, gold vinyl, which is really cool. Well, it's not really that cool, but it was cool to just come across used. I knew about this uh, because my brother-in-law had picked it up. Um, I think on Record Store Day actually this year he had picked it up and I was hanging out with them and he had played it and I found it was really really cool, really nice, uh, I mean I don't understand the lyrics but nice uh, singing and beautiful guitar work on here if uh, that gives you any indication of the vibe. And this I showed in my uh, response to Ben's. Ben Costello's hip hop video. I picked this up. I don't buy much hip hop because you don't. I don't see much hip hop. But one of my favorite uh, hip hop albums when I was a teenager, Tyler People's Expansion Team. If you're into hip hop. A few soul albums. I'll show you the favorite one. That one I was really happy to find. One of my favorite artists, Willie Hutch. This is one that I didn't have of his. I'm just missing a few now. Of the, out of the, no, I think I might be missing one out of the ones uh, that I want. I mean, I don't have originals of Foxy Brown and the Mac, but very happy to find this. Promo copy. Music's good. Not my favorite of his, but definitely uh, enjoyable. Willie Hatch, fully exposed on Motown. <clears throat> Picked up Wilson Pickett. Don't knock my love. So, so I think it's my third Wilson Pickett album. You know, I pick him up when I see him for, for fairly cheap because, you know, it's classic. It's nothing rare or, uh, you know, new, but I don't know all his music. I know some songs, but definitely uh, some dope, dope uh, music on here. <coughs> this <coughs> is a reissue that <coughs> when I went digging, <coughs> sorry, in uh, Toronto, I found this, an original of this. I didn't know what it was, but it sounded really cool. It's a, a soul album on uh, Flying Dutchman. And I happened to cross a reissue at my uh, local record store here for a half price. So I think it was like $6 sealed. So the, uh, the original I saw was going for 100 So I'll pick this up. I don't listen to it too much, but this is a pretty good album by an artist I don't know, Esther Marrow, Newport News, Virginia. But she has an incredible voice on Flying Dutchman. And lastly, I picked up this on vinyl uh, that I didn't have, Voodoo by D'Angelo. This is the heaviest packaging I've ever felt. Anyway, they did a nice job on this uh, reissue. What else do we have in here? Yeah, so you have... Uh, 
there is a, a little book in here somewhere with uh, some reading, some extended liner notes type deal, which is nice. Soul Classic, don't need to say much about this. Modern Soul Classic, you guys know that. You guys know voodoo. Anyway, so that's it. I got through it all. 20 minutes. Not so bad. Sorry. Um, but yeah, check it out. Uh, please leave some comments. If you, have any, if you know any of these albums, you got anything to say, let me know. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. And uh, everyone, enjoy the fall. Peace.